Good afternoon. What we're going to show today is how we take the same flow that we used to produce A and F, and now we're going to produce output compatible with SOLIDWORKS. The only thing that we need to change is our output format. So where before we had A and F, now we're selecting 3DI for step, and we're also creating dielectric bodies, and we also have to select a window to define the edges of the board, which I've already done. And our output's going to be in Artworks 3DI format instead of ANF. So once we've done that, we can just click Execute. And the program will execute very, very quickly. And now we're going to look at our output data. What you see here is our 3D viewer and you can see the substrates and you can see between them the metal. Now I want you to notice that at this stage what we don't have is we don't have any dielectric that's flowing in between the gaps in the metal and that's a very important thing to have when you're going to do a SOLIDWORKS finite element simulation. And we'll actually be adding that when we do the import into SOLIDWORKS. Let's have a closer look in here. I'm going to turn off the top layer so you can see. All right, I've turned off all of the dielectric layers that go between the conductors. And so here you can see the conductors and you can see the vias that go in between them. In many cases, this model is sufficient for certain kinds of simulators. But for a true finite element simulator, we're going to have to do the extra step. And we're going to do that in SOLIDWORKS. We've started up SOLIDWORKS and we're using the read 3 di plugin that Artwork developed. And here we're selecting the file we just created, scaling it at 1. We're recovering the arcs and circles. This means this will reduce our file size in SOLIDWORKS. And here's a special feature we've developed specifically for people who are doing thermal simulation and stress simulation on PC boards. First of all, we're going to extend the board out a bit so you have a nice clean uh, surface on the edges to create your boundary conditions. Second of all, we're going to make sure that the drill holes in the substrates line up exactly with the vias that are produced uh, between the copper layers. And finally, this enable negative dielectric will build the extra dielectric we need that flows between the gaps in the copper. That's uh, important that that be perfectly generated so that when you do your meshing, you don't run into any kind of discontinuities. So those three things have to be checked off. Once you've done that, you just click Import. It builds each layer into its own part, and depending on how big and complicated the layer is, it can take more or less time to do that. Now it's building negative dielectric. And there you can see the finished assembly. Now you see that there's a number of parts, and each part corresponds to a different layer. These would be the metals. This is the dielectric that we've built that flows between the metal. Then these are the board layers. Internally, there's vias also, which I'll show. And now you're looking at the second metal layer, and this is the dielectric that's flown between it. We've computed all of those. These are the vias that go from the second metal layer up to the first metal layer, which I've hidden. So you can see what we've done is we've produced a, a very accurate and layout, essentially, that perfectly mates all the surfaces so that when your 3D finite mesher goes through this, it doesn't run into any problems where there's gaps. All of these dielectrics that were built by basically taking the metal layers and subtracting them from an extrusion based on the extents there. So this is something we've done specifically for people that are working on printed circuit board uh, stress and thermal analysis and who are using a finite element approach. It saves a lot of hand editing time. We're also able to customize it. We've had some customers who want us to model the vias not so much as a, uh, as a solid cylinder but as a hollow cylinder filled with epoxy and we've done that. Thank you.